Hello again everyone, my name is Jim. Thank you for joining me on this video. Uh, we are going to have a look today at the UXG Lite, uh, which has just been released by Ubiquiti. We're also going to have a quick look at the older USGs and the other UXG in the range, the UXG Pro. Um, and to sit alongside them all, we're going to have a look at the LTE Pro, which is obviously here in the uh, UK and EU region, uh, and demonstrate how that behaves which is a bit different to how most 4G backups tend to work. Now in front of me, we have on the right hand side, the new Unify uh, Next Generation Gateway Lite. And on the left hand side, we have the Unify Security Gateway 3. So we have the UXG Lite and the USG 3. So to start with the new UXG Lite, this is obviously the latest standalone gateway in Ubiquiti's range. Uh, it has a USB-C port on the back to power it. It has a one gigabit LAN port and a one gigabit WAN port. And around the front when it's on, there is a single LED to indicate its status. Other than that, there's not a lot else to show you. It's very, very basic and simple and in terms of aesthetics. And it's very, very nice and small. It fits almost in the palm of your hands. Um, but it packs quite a punch. This is the device we've been waiting for for quite some time to supersede this. So this can do full one gigabit throughput with all the threat management facilities turned on. Now I know there are people out there that are still buying and using USG 3s and that for the moment is not a problem but these will start to be wound down. Now they've already sort of wound down the firmware updates on them and expect the USG range to be classed as vintage soon. The USG XG, which is a very, very niche use case USG, has already been classed as end of life. So I don't have one of those, so I won't be showing you one today, but that was the big USG with multiple 10 gig ports. It didn't last long. Um, I think there were some reliability issues with it, but that being said, we've moved on from there now anyway. So if you are looking at a USG3, please consider using a USG instead. The only thing that the USG3 has over its uh, replacement is the fact that the USG3 is a dual WAN router. Unfortunately, the US UXG Lite is a single WAN device. Now, this being an entry level device, it's not too much of a problem. There are ways to have an additional network connection, obviously using the uh, LTE Pro or LTE backup devices. Uh, we'll come on to that later on. But yes, if you need dual WAN uh, and you need a, a good throughput, these are not the devices for you. We'll show you the UXG Pro later on. But other than that, the UXG is better in every way. Um, the UXG also supports Teleport VPN, which is quite a nice, easy to set up feature whereas the USG does not. The UXG supports the Magic VPN service that is uh, part of the latest versions of Unify and again is obviously going to support all the upcoming and new features, whereas the USG has no new features being added. In fact, uh, those of you who are using USGs may have noticed that the speed test feature has been removed because the hardware in here just cannot reliably generate a speed test anymore. So Ubiquiti are already winding down support for this and expect them to start to be put classed as vintage, if not end of life, pretty soon. That being said, there are still people who will be using these for quite some time to come. So uh, those are the small routers. Let's move on to the next step up. Now I'm going to have to show you these one at a time just due to the size of them. This is a USG Pro or a USG Pro 4 as it's often referred to. This is the bigger brother to the USG 3. It comes with two LAN ports, two WAN ports that can also be SFP ports. Again, this is still a one gigabit router. It can cope with one gigabit throughput of routing and with full threat management turned on, it can cope with about 
between 250 and 300 megabits per second, roughly. It does vary sort of router to router with these ones. But again, if you currently are running one of these and are looking to upgrade, the chances are if you're running one of these, you are already using either one or two of the LAN ports or one or two, at least one or two of the WAN ports on this, which is usually why these get installed. Um, if you are using one of these and are only using one LAN and one WAN, the upgrade path is to that if you are still using gigabit, because this little thing has more throughput capacity than this at the moment. Um, unfortunately, obviously, the limitation is the number of WAN ports. But if that is not a problem, you can do that. But if you do need two WAN ports, then you need to step up to this, the UXG Pro. This is Ubiquiti's largest UXG router at the moment. Uh, this is the alternative device. If you have a requirement for dual WAN or dual LAN for your Unify network. Looking very similar, obviously, to the Dream Machines. Uh, we have got a one gigabit LAN port, a 10 gigabit SFP plus LAN port, a one gigabit WAN port, and a 10 gigabit SFP plus WAN port. So this is a dual WAN and dual WAN, the same as the USG Pro was. We have got the standard Ubiquiti LCD screen, but most interestingly, around the back, we have got RPS port, but we have got a power socket and we have a controllable power socket. Now this allows you to run your modem, your other router that may be providing your internet, and you can set this to be rebooted if it loses internet connectivity, or you can control it manually, which is quite a nice little feature on these. These have been around for a while. They've had some good firmware updates recently. And again, these support all the latest Ubiquiti systems such as Teleport and the uh, Magic VPN system. But uh, yes, this is the bigger router from Ubiquiti. And with full threat management on, this is very similar to the Dream Machines. It supports about three to three and a half gigabit per second throughput with threat management on. It will route around 10 gig if required with threat management off. But if you're running a Unify router and a Unify system, I would suggest you keep threat management on. Now on the screen in front of me, we have a very, very simple Ubiquiti Unify network setup. We have got our USG3, which is the main router. We have got an eight port 60 watt PoE switch. We have got the ULTE Pro uh, as our backup internet connection. And we've got the Cloud Key Gen 2, which it's connected to. And if we have a look in settings, and under internet connections, you will see that we have got my internet connection and we have the status of the backup LTE. If we go into networks, you can see we've got the default network and I've set up a small IoT network on here, which if you go into, you can see because we have the LTE, I have the backup box ticked for that as well. Now, if you are looking to migrate from your USG to a UXG of any model, so whether you're looking to migrate from a USG 3, a USG Pro, to a UXG, or to a UXG Pro, it's a very, very simple, easy to do migration. Step one, make sure you have a backup. Step two, make sure that you have all your internet settings. Once you've confirmed those, then proceed to step three. Step three, Select your existing router, so whether it's a USG3 or a USG Pro. Go into Settings and click Remove. This will forget the router from your Ubiquiti Unify controller, and that will obviously factory reset the router. Now, go and swap your routers. If, for example, you are going from a USG3 to a UXG Lite, whilst the uh, USG is factory resetting itself, you can plug in your UXG, remove the LAN port from your USG, and move the WAN port 
connection over to your new UXG. That will allow you to finish factory resetting your USG so it's ready to be used by someone else or you to sell it if you wish. And now the UXG will appear in the controller. If you are migrating from a USG Pro to a UXG Pro, for example, the procedure is exactly the same. Whilst the USG Pro is factory resetting, take the LAN cable and plug it into port 2 and take your WAN internet connection and plug it into port 1 or if you are using SFP you can plug it into either of those and it will also appear in the controller. Now once your new gateway has finished booting up it will pop up in the controller and you will be able to adopt it by clicking obviously click to adopt. Once adopted that is it. It is that simple and it doesn't matter whether you're going from a USG 3 or 4 to a UXG Lite Pro. It's very very simple to do. If you have more than one internet connection currently, so if you have multiple WAN settings on your existing USG, you will obviously lose the ability if you go from a USG 3 to a UXG Lite to set where your secondary internet connection is set to. Uh, so I would suggest, unfortunately, that you remove it from the console. But if you are going from a UXG or USG to a UXG Pro, you can make sure that it has assigned the second internet connection to the second WAN port, or you can assign them appropriately to whichever port you wish. The uh, LTE backup has come across with no issues. And if you look in VPN, you now have the ability to use the Teleport VPN service along with all the other more advanced VPN services that were not available to USG systems. You can go into security, uh, turning on things like the internal honeypot. You can then enable suspicious activity fully, whereas on the USG3 it was very limited as to what it could do and it would obviously massively impact throughput. Uh, my suggestions are notify block and high. And even with all of this on, it will still maintain the one gigabit throughput that is uh, been sorely missed in the small Unify routers. But that is it for migrating between USGs to UXGs. You'll see it's getting ready because it's enabling all the services. Now, the LTE series of devices allows the USGs and the UXGs to have an additional WAN port, and it works with both types of device. The way the LTE system works is effectively it becomes an additional WAN port to the USG or UXG, depending on which one you're using. And you can see it's uh, currently active on my system because it's obviously kicked in because the UXG was reconfiguring. You can see there it's gone back to standby mode and you can pull off the information. Now, the different thing about the LTE range is that it plugs into the LAN side of your router. It does not plug into any WAN ports and this often leads to some confusion with the devices because most 4G backup devices plug in and behave as an additional connection. This, however, creates its own connection and can cause some confusion amongst people who are inexperienced with using these devices. The actual device itself um, plugs into a PoE port. It is PoE powered and it has the option for PoE pass through and you can obviously plug in an external antenna should you require it. The device redundancy level is only activated when the main internet connection or both the internet connections go down and it fails over pretty quickly. Um, from testing uh, I have seen it fail over and drop less than one packet. Um, it's very, very quick to fail over and fail back now. Uh, there were some times in the past 
where it was none too reliable, but generally we find now that they do behave quite well. It is, however, a 4G device, and it's quite a low throughput. I think its top speed is about 150 megabits throughput. But if you do need something and you are running a UXG or a USG, um, and you are looking for a 4G device, they are pretty usable nowadays. Um, they do a good job, and you can even specify which networks you wish to use the failover uh, if the internet goes down. So I can actually disable my IoT network from having access to the failover network should it fail over, should the internet go down on my main line. And this is one way, again, as I said, to get a second WAN port on a UXG Lite. Not a complete WAN port, but if you need a backup 4G connection, it's a very easy way and cost-effective way to do it. So there we have it, whether you're looking at moving from a USG Pro to a UXG Pro, from a USG 3 to a UXG Lite, or whether you're looking at adding some redundancy into your UXG Lite with an LTE device. Ubiquiti's new-ish little router is quite a powerful little box compared to its predecessors. Hopefully, maybe in the future, we will see some sort of in-between device. Maybe we will gain a more powerful version of the Pro, and the Pro will come down in price. Um, or maybe we will see a slightly bigger version, more akin to something along the lines of, say, their USP range. I mean, it would be nice if we gained something similar to the USP router for the Unify range. but. Unfortunately, we will have to wait and see. But hopefully this has been helpful to you. And if it has been helpful to you, uh, I would highly appreciate it if you click like and maybe even considered subscribing to the channel. Um, trying to uh, build the following a bit and you will find uh, all the links to my social media and the Discord, etc. down below. Now, hopefully Ubiquity will continue to build out on this range. We've seen the Unify Express range launch, and one of the things that does need to be said about the UXG Lite is it can only be used by non-Dream consoles and non-Unify Express devices. So you cannot control a UXG Lite with a Dream Machine, Dream Machine Pro, Dream Router, Dream Wall, Dream Wall SE, Dream Machine SE, uh, or a Unify Express gateway. It is a standalone controller, cloud hosted controller, or cloud key only device. That being said, it's uh, great to see this uh, long awaited device finally make it into the uh, into the light, and uh, hopefully we'll get a maybe an in between device to cope with a bit more throughput and a few more WAN ports to deal with the uh, many USG threes that are out there doing multiple WAN routing. Um, so something that still is a bit missing, but it's a good improvement. Anyway, I will catch up with you soon. Thank you for watching and I will see you again.